uh, two signings today. Could you uh, talk a little bit about Brown and Lamar? Yes. Um, really excited to have Lamar back. Uh, I think it's his fourth time uh, with the Sounders. Uh, second since I've been here. Uh, really good guy. Uh, you know, really good pro. Uh, had to go through a little back and forth uh, with respect to the free agency process. Uh, but ultimately, he decided this was the best place for him, and um, we're happy to welcome him back with open arms. Uh, with respect to Cali, um, had a good year with uh, with Houston last year. A uh, kid that we've been watching for a while uh, came into camp, and, and uh, you know we said he had to prove it, and he had to earn the spot, and, and he's done that. Uh, he's been solid in every preseason outing. Uh, he's worked hard. He's fit in well with the group, uh, and he's earned it. So we're going to add him as well. In regards to uh, uh, Lamar, was it leadership I were trying to bring back? Leadership and goals, uh, you know, he scores. He, he scores every time, every, everywhere he goes, he scores. And uh, I think that's a handy thing to have, whether that's starting or off the bench. And I think Lamar's a versatile player who can play in a, in a couple of different roles. And, uh, you know, I think anybody who knows the club as well as he does uh, definitely has a good feel for the locker room and, and definitely can provide some leadership as well. Looking at your roster, uh, where could you uh, add some pieces? Where, where do you feel like you might be able to uh, gain some talent? I think we still have the ability to add another defender, uh, potentially another attacker. I don't know if those will be now or later, but uh, you know, you, you guys have heard me allude to we're we're, uh, we're working on a defender, uh, and uh, you know, I think part of this too now is we've brought back you know the team that's gone to back-to-back -back cups, and let's see how they do now, and let's see how the group does. I think that they've earned that. I don't think we've talked enough about that. Um, you know, part of what you're managing when you're a GM is is not just uh, you know how do I draw the most attention to the club with a new signing or something like that, but it's how do I respect the locker room and how do we respect the players that have gotten us here. Uh, and the players we have here have accomplished a whole heck of a lot. Uh, and again, I know we didn't end the way we wanted it to last year, but uh, there's a lot of darn good players on our team. Uh, and I'm pretty excited about how we're going to look going forward, both in Champions League and in, and in uh, MLS. So is that what gives the club uh, no urgency to maybe feel pressure by other signings across the league? I have never in my life worried about what other people do. I can't make everybody happy. We can never make everybody happy. Uh, we need to worry about our team. We always will. Uh, and if we build our team the right way, uh, you know, the last decade has indicated that we'll be uh, pretty competitive. Garth, Bill, so the expectations of uh, MLS clubs in the CONCACAF Champions League now with the TAM money, how do, how do you see the, the clubs? Look, I think it's, it's a great infusion. You know, I think it may take one more cycle to, to really have that money because uh, it's coming in all at once right now and uh, all the players are new and it's it's kind of rushed but uh, I think within by the next cycle I think you'll be fully up to speed with it um, but in general look the salary caps doubled in in less than three years about two and a half years so that's really really uh, impressive um, really grateful to the owners for having uh, made that investment uh, and it allows us to compete with Mexican teams and and you know I've said this elsewhere that it's incumbent upon uh, those of us who manage teams now to to use those resources wisely and to make our team competitive with with Mexican teams so um, that's the big challenge and uh, you know look uh, that's the way forward I mean and uh, you know we're not comparing ourselves to EPL or the Bundesliga or La Liga like we have a neighbor with a very, very strong league in the in League MX, and uh, it's a very worthy opponent, and it's a very hard challenge. Uh, but it starts with Santa Tecla for us, uh, El Salvador, good team. Um, you know, and we need to be respectful of the entire region. Uh, but if ultimately MLS can be uh, one of, if not the best league in the region, that will by definition make us one of the best leagues in the world. So I think it's a worthwhile goal to try to take on uh, League MX. Is the MLS uh, regular tournament the same importance than the CONCACAF? Uh, I think in, in the beginning, well, to state the obvious, we're not playing uh, MLS games quite yet. So right now the priority is Champions League, uh, and it's a very quick turnaround if we are fortunate enough to be able to advance. So uh, I do think that we would have a priority on the Champions League in the early stage of the season. Um, you know, if you look at, again, 34-game season um, versus eight CONCACAF games, you know, uh, you're probably going to put your importance on those those Champions League games. And, and look, we said as a club, uh, it's it's important to us. We want to try and win this tournament. Uh, we we want to try and beat Mexican teams. If we get the opportunity to face one again, we got to beat 
uh, Santa Tecla first, uh, and that's not going to be easy. It's a, it's a really tough environment. Uh, we were just joking on the sidelines. I think there's a 60 degree temperature difference right now between Seattle and, and uh, San Salvador. So, I mean, anybody who, you know, if you guys want to take your uh, winter coats off and bring your swim trunks, uh, you can come down with us to El Salvador and uh, play that game and turn around and play the second leg up here, you know, six days later. So, you know, that's what CONCACAF is all about. It's tough travel, tough environment, uh, tough climate. Um, and it won't be an easy game. It's a, it's a good team. We saw them play against Dallas uh, in their preseason. They're well organized um, and, and a worthy opponent. So we'll, we'll try to take them on, and then all these other wonderful questions hopefully will come up if uh, we're fortunate enough to play a Mexican team in uh, the next round. What type of uh, reception do you expect for uh, the for Roldan uh, in, in terms of him being a Salvadorian um, and then going out there? What kind of what kind of conversations have you had with management to make sure that you know everything stays within the the friendly confines of the game and not necessarily gets out of hand uh, in terms of him having not represented El Salvador as he had a chance to do so? Yeah, uh, you know, look, I think that uh, that decision now that Christians represent in the United States is maybe harder to to argue with uh, in the sense of I think it, you know for a couple of years there it was hey you may never get called into the U.S. so why aren't you representing El Salvador? So, look, I don't know that we want to wade into the middle of that controversy, but uh, Christians going to be safe. There's there's Concacaf does a good job with these events. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to have Alex down there as well, and I think it'll be exciting for them to be you know in their country of their family's origin uh, or one of of the countries because I think he's, he's the other side is Guatemalan if I remember correctly uh, you know and so I think that'll be a cool experience for them I, I have no reason to think that there's gonna be any, any animosity with the fans there and you know if somebody's upset with him for which country he, he picked you know I, I just I think it'll play out on the football field and and uh, you know certainly we will work to take care of our players while we're down there but CONCACAF will too it's it's a safe competition saw that RSL run a few years back. What are some traits of, of teams that make uh, or that tend to make deep runs in CCL? You take it seriously. I mean, it's as simple as, you know, to the to the question that we had earlier, you know, are you going to prioritize what are you going to prioritize? We're going to prioritize Champions League. And that means that in the league you may start a little slower. And you say you got 34 games and we're going to look at the big picture and if we need to make some stuff up, we will. Um, you know, it's it's it like I you know I wish I had something profound to offer, but it's it's literally saying Champions League's important and telling your guys that and uh, picking your teams with that in mind and you know if you do that and you believe it as an organization, it gives yourself the best chance to win. And it doesn't mean you're not trying in the MLS games. It means that it's, it's look we we talked all off season. This is a great opportunity for our young players. It's a big reason why we brought back the number of players that we did because we have familiarity with not just 11 guys, but with 18 guys. I mean, with Lamar, we may have 19 now back from last year. Uh, and so these guys are not going to be strangers to one another on the pitch, whether it's the first team or and there is no first team and second team. Like, we're going to have mixed groups for all these, um, but we're going to try to win Champions League and try to go deep in it. And um, at the same time, we're going to try to win our MLS games along the way. Though, what what uh, style of play, and for especially for that RSL team, made them so uh, effective in CCL play? Uh, RSL, you know, we played one way. We kept the ball, played a four four two diamond. Uh, that's what we did, and we found in in Central America, in particular, uh, in the heat. If you can keep the ball and make the other team run, that can be a very effective style, uh, on the particularly on the road. Uh, so whether we'll play the same way, I mean, I, I just, I mean, that's seven years ago, seven years and three coaches ago. So, uh, you know, the league's changed and the tactics have changed and the personnel has changed. And so, I mean, it, it's a nice thing to reflect on. And, you know, conceptually, sure, I think keeping the ball still works, but this is a different group of players and a different coach and a different scheme. And, you know, so I think some of those things are not that applicable. You have some better weather conditions coming up for you down in El Salvador, but one of the CCL matches that's going to kick off tonight is probably expecting a game time temperature of about 20 degrees in Denver. Do you think there might be a better time frame or window that the knockout stage of the tournament could land, or is this kind of as good as it gets? It, look, this is an improvement over what it was. I mean, the the, uh, the fact that we're playing now and that they've moved to this round of 16 format and um, there's some more uh, MLS Central America crossover, so it's not a, a Mexican opponent necessarily in the first round. So we get, you know, it's still a four-week preseason, but we have some ability to kind of ramp up. Um, but again, El Salvador, Santa Tecla, this is a tough game. It's a tough opponent. Um, and it's early in our season. I mean, we haven't played a lot of big games yet, and that's always going to be the challenge in this tournament. But the, the alternative is to put this during our playoff stretch run. I mean, to play it in the fall, and that that doesn't make any sense at all uh, from an MLS perspective. So, this is it is what it is, and you got to be ready. And it's a short turnaround, and it'll be a good test of our mentality.